Hey everyone, Drive to School Podcast, Pastor Goodman, Pastor Matt Richard. How you doing, friend? Hey, it's good to see you, Harrison. Good to see you too. How's uh, how's life been going? Uh, it's been uh, crazy, uh, crazy uh-huh. busy. Um, but uh, we got uh, a couple weeks left of high school football, uh, junior high, or JV football, excuse me, for my son. And then uh, daughter's winding down with volleyball. And uh, yeah, little. then we'll, then things will slow down a little bit in the Richard household. And then once we get snow, I mean, up in North Dakota, once we get snow, then everybody kind of, we all hate the snow, but when we get the snow, it's kind of a permission to get the blankets Breathe. on the couch and just relax. And so once the first snow comes, we, we grumble, but deep down, we're kind of excited that we get to hibernate. You know? I adore a blizzard. A, a blizzard is just a really good reminder that you don't need to be doing half the things you're convinced you do. It's a chance to sort of slow down, spend some family time. It's, it's the yeah. best. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So yeah. right around the corner, it's been cool. out. We had our first frost the other day up here and yeah, before we know it, it'll be, uh, be snowing and we'll be grumbling and yet thankful at the same time. So that's, that's my, that's my persona. So I'm, I'm, I'm with you. Um, you <laughs> so, uh, we've been asking, what does Jesus say about stuff and uh, what are we going to talk about today? Yeah. What does Jesus say about death and to death? Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Good stuff. You know, when it comes to death, uh, you know, we, we live in a culture, I think we could all agree, we live in a culture that's very, very saturated with death. I mean, we just look at the media that we consume, you know, the the movies that we watch, the media that we consume. Uh, when we turn on the nightly news or we turn on YouTube and watch the news, it's it's just we, we're, we're surrounded by it all the time. And yet at the same time, I would I would argue that we're really inexperienced with it as a culture. Uh, you know, everything's sanitized. And so when our loved ones die, they typically die at the hospital, the nursing home, they don't die in their houses with us. Um, And then once they die, then we, you know, uh, thank God for the uh, funeral homes, they do a great job, don't get me wrong, they do a great job, but then they typically fix grandpa, grandma up or our loved ones up. So they look better in death than they did before when they were alive. And so, uh, and then we do a a funeral and then we put them in the ground and then we just kind of almost wash our hands of it. And so again, I, I, th- I think, you know, we're saturated with death uh, in our culture. It's around us. We feel it. And at the same time, we don't have a ton of experience of it. And deep down, I think we're all truly honest with ourselves. You know, I hear people say, well, I'm not afraid of death. I don't know if I believe that. I th- yeah. We're all afraid of death. I'm afraid of death. I'm afraid of the process of dying. And I'm also afraid of death because it's, it stings. It hurts. It's not the way it's right. supposed to be. Right. And, and, and I mean, even just uh, even to the very sort of depths of, of, of unbelief, it's still something you can't control. And that's, that's everything that we would make an idol out of. It's, it's a chance to control something. And death is that last great uncontrollable thing. Even that the scientists, they try so hard to, to sort of find a new way. They'll upload your mind into the cloud. They'll, they'll freeze your body. They'll, they'll, they'll anti-age. They'll, all of this stuff to escape this, this last great enemy. And if you can't control it, you're right. You're either, you're either trying to make friends with it so that it can be on your side or you're running from it. And however you want to dress it up, it, it always sort of gets put into one of those two categories. And neither of them really fits. Right. Right. Well, even even think about this. I, I've, I've been fascinated with this, with with this idea of of the old Greek mythology. They had all like Zeus and all these Greek myth, mythological gods that they would they would uh, talk about. And then we have our own version of that. It's called the Avenger superheroes. Right. Oh, yeah. So we have the Incredible Hulk. We have uh, uh, Thor and we have Spider-Man and all these guys. And we go to these movies and I was kind of contemplating the other day. It's like, why are there why is there such an attraction to these movies? Um, and, and frankly, I, 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 my, my movie critic comes out and I kind of get a little critical of them, but, but nonetheless, that aside, why, why do we go to these movies? At least I know when I go to these movies or I watch them, there's a sense where you feel what empowered you identify with these heroes and they are what define death. They're yeah. defined death. They're, they're like immortals. Uh, they're going to live forever. And so we identify with that. We feel empowered, we feel bold, we feel strong. It's an escape from the sting of death because if we're like them, death can't touch us. Uh, and so even there, we're, we're, we're trying to escape the sting of death and um, this way that we puff ourselves up and, you know, we, we, we pep ourselves up and we get, get you know, like, you know, this, this growl within, like, I, I can do it. I, I can, I can seize the moment, you know? And so even there, right. With the superhero movies we watch, we oftentimes try to escape death. Right. We, we want to be the one who, who makes the last great stand and somehow in, in just the right American way overcomes all evil. Or, or even if there, there is sort of this last great sacrifice, this, this martyrdom in the movies, the legacy is, is unbelievable. So that the characters in your superhero movies that, that do actually die, at least for a little while until, you know, the sequel comes out and they need more money, um, that, 
the, the legacy that they leave, the, the works that they have done are, are remembered in such a way that they almost go on. And, and I, I think in a lot of ways, we, we really chase that too. Like, like who will remember me for my good? Um, and that's, that's a scary thing because there's going to be no shortage of people who want to show up to my funeral to do a little dance and tell everyone what a jerk I was. So what do I do with this stuff? Well, and that's the thing, though, is, is how often we remembered. I mean, just consider this, bef- you know, consider this. I'm not sure we've talked about this before, but this is a this is a profound thought to think about this here. You know, how many of us know the names of our great grandpa and grandma or our great great grandfather? Um, I, I don't. Uh, shame on me. I don't. I don't. I mean, I know my grandfather yeah. and, uh, you know, his legacy. And I know know his name and, and both my grandfather's legacy. But beyond that, I, that's about it. And, 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 and so our history only lasts, what, maybe about one generation and then we're forgotten. And uh, all the works that we do, you know, all the things we accumulate uh, at our death, many times we get thrown in the trash and, uh, you know, we're not remembered, which terrifies us, right? It terrifies. Not only does death, death sting us, um, puts us six feet under, but then we're forgotten, you know? Who's, go- who's going to remember us? And that's where we get to the gospel. Jesus, what does Jesus he remembers us? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Jesus says, uh, in the text for this Sunday coming up, the uh, boy, that the young man who, assuming young man, uh, coming out on that stretcher uh, that, that is called a beer, and he's coming on the stretcher. He just died, and the mom is wailing and crying. It's not just a soft cry. She, she's wailing. Jesus widow, comes up to that. He comes up to that, 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 that man, and he says, rise. And he gets up and that's, what's going to happen to us. You know, we're going to be six feet under trumpets are going to sound rise. We're going to burst out. He's not going to forget us. You know, Matt Richard and Harrison are not going to be what forgotten in the grave. Jesus will remember us because we're the baptized. We're the chosen. And uh, that is for everyone else. So when we face death, uh, yeah, death scares us. Death creates fear. But at the same time, we look at the gospel. We look at the resurrection, the hope of Christ. And realizing what Jesus says, rise. And he also says in the face of death, do not fear. And we essentially, we do not fear because guess what? Jesus is bigger than death. Right. That's, that's the place to put it. It's underneath Jesus feet. He, he has conquered death. And so when the scriptures talk, they never talk, call death, your friend, they never call death a good thing, uh, but they call the victory over death, a good thing. Death is the last great enemy, but it's the defeated one. It, it, it lies underneath Jesus feet. So when we talk about, you know, being remembered that happens through death and resurrection, not by escaping death. Uh, when, when we talk about, you know, living forever, that's not by, by running from death or making friends with death, but by Jesus defeating it and pulling us out of the tomb. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think too often we look at death itself, like you're saying here already, uh, we, we try to try to manipulate it or we try to either friend it, get buddy, buddy with death, or we try to uh, yeah, tone it down, make it more like, oh, death is natural. It's, you know, there's nothing natural about death at all. Uh, but we try, we try to tame it, I guess, if you could say it that way. Uh, but when it really comes down to it, I think where we need to be is just simply just confess. I'm afraid of death. Consumes my thoughts. I try to run from it. Uh, who will save me from this body of death? Uh, thanks be yeah. to Jesus. And so the answer to death is not Matt Richard trying to overcome it or Harrison trying to run from it. It's Jesus who comes to us and he speaks that confident gospel into us. Rise, you will rise. I am the resurrection and the life. Uh, he who believes in me uh, will never, never die. Right. And, and he takes it one step further too. like Jesus doesn't just sort of call you out of death. He goes into it for you. So he'll walk up to this, uh, the, this stretcher that the man is laying on and he'll touch the dead body uh, that he'll become unclean. He'll, he'll, he'll grab all of everything that is unsanitized, everything that is rotting and he'll be marked by it. And he'll have to carry that all the way to its, its finality. He trades places with this young man. He pulls him off the stretcher and he hops on the cross. Uh, and that's so that, that, that we can actually have a, a miracle that, that endures even in the face of a, a great enemy. For, for Christ does not let us carve our way out of the tomb on our own, but, but he kicks open that rock uh, and he bursts from the tomb himself after first going ahead of us into death, that, that, we, would have, that we would have hope, not hope in, in a, a legacy, not hope in an escape, but hope in a resurrection. Yeah. Yeah. Just, I mean, just ponder that for a moment. I mean, we, we spend all this time and energy running from death and yet the son of God, he goes towards it. Right. So, I mean, we look in the gospels, right. Uh, he goes to Jerusalem. He knows he's going for Jerusalem for that one point of suffering, bleeding and dying. Uh, often the disciples are like, you know, Hey, when's the party going to get started? We want to get to Jerusalem. We're going to party. We want to be on the right and left. We want to be in the places of honor and glory. And Jesus says, you do not know what you ask. Uh, and Jesus knows all along that he's going to what? 
he's marching towards death, uh, going towards that cross. And so, you know, I'm thinking back to my, you know, if I, if I was a disciple of Jesus during that time, you know, I would probably, number one, I would think hey, we're going to go have a party. We're going to go dominate the Romans. Let's, let's bring it on. But then if I knew that it was actually certain death that was coming, I'd be like, ah, uh, let's go north. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get out of here. I don't want to go there. Or, you know, you go on your own, Jesus, and when it's all figured out, then let me know. I don't want to go that way. And yet the Son of God, he goes right towards death because that's the Son of God. That's who he is. And he's not afraid of death. He comes right at it for the sake of what? Death and resurrection for us. Right. And this is not, again, something that we just sort of have to, to wait for either. Um, because if it just sort of sits there and looms over you, even if you know that it's it's defeated, right? So I know I have the victory, but I'm not looking forward to the process. Um, instead, we can mark ourselves by our baptism and say, I already died. Every day, I, I am united with Jesus in his death. And every day, I am united with him in his resurrection. That's Romans 6 right there. And so I can I can say the sting of death, it already tried. It, it it got me. I'm dead and I'm risen. I, I'm still not looking forward to pain. I don't like pain. Uh, but at the same time, I, I know that that Christ has not just sort of set aside in heaven and said, one day I'll come and get you, but he's already united me to the victory today. Yeah. When, when we baptize little babies here at uh, St. Paul's, we have we have some of these the greatest grandmas in the church. And and I just had a grandma drop off uh, uh, a, a, a knit together blanket. It's white and it's, and it's wavy like water. And so we have about three or four grandmas that make these. And so when, when we baptize little babies, we take that and I have the mom and dad wrap that around the baby just to tuck that baby in. And I usually reference this every Sunday. So, you know, the next time that this, this person, this child, this, this, this wonderful baptized uh, little girl or little boy, next time they will be clothed in white in this sanctuary is going to be at their funeral as they come into the funeral in the casket with it covered with a pall, with a white pall, signifying that their baptism holds them from the very beginning to the very end, tucks them into Jesus, binds them to Jesus's death and resurrection, and marks them for the uh, eternity to come. Absolutely. So Jesus talks about death, uh, never as a friend, uh, and never as something to, to run away from, but as a defeated enemy. Yeah, absolutely. Defeated. Jesus, he's the one who what puts a hole in the belly of death. Marches right on out on that third day and does the same for us. Fantastic. Pastor, thanks so much. Yep. Good stuff. Good to see you, Harrison. Take care.